Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer some of the many questions that you're sending. We try to be very uh, anointed and biblical about selecting the right ones, and uh, we think we've done that today. So, Angel, what do you think? Joe, one of my family members lost their child before birth and is struggling with their faith now. I don't really know how to reach or minister to them besides just being there. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, I'd say being there is probably the most important thing. Yeah, me too. Um, Because sometimes, you know, I mean, words can be pretty shallow at a time like that when someone's heartbroken. So I would um, take them a meal, call and just say, I've just been thinking about you. Uh, Just do something. Just Don't mow the grass. Back them out the car. Just do st- special stuff for them. Yeah, be there. And they'll know. You, you you always know who your friends are. Yes, you do. When your heart has been, sh- or your world has been shattered. Yes. And that is devastating. Everybody knows this. When you go through hell, you find out who your real friends are. So they'll stick with you. They don't gum flap you to death. They're just there. Yeah. And so we've all been there. We've lost loved ones and, you know, accidents, died early, whatever, uh, stillborn. We've, we've all been there. We're going to do Gonna show up and be a blessing. Not gonna say a word. Not gonna say nothing. Just gonna be there, and wash some dishes, and do some laundry. Hey, if you need anything else, let me know. Just be there. Yeah. And they'll eventually, when they everybody gets up when they open up, they'll ask you, "What do you think?" I have no answer. I get to heaven, I'll ask God. But right now, I have I have no answer. I lost a son-in-law to uh, cancer. Just married my daughter. A great wedding. Great couple. Uh, very anointed, made good money. And uh, three years into the marriage, he died of testicular cancer. My daughter stood in the front yard crying, why did it happen? I said, babe, I don't have a clue. I've been praying. I got nothing from God. God didn't say a thing to me about it. I don't know. I get to heaven, I'll ask God. But we, all I know is he's gone. You're still here. We got stuff to do. You got bills to pay. Still got a house payment. It's like we got to figure some stuff out. Can't sit here and cry forever. So just be there for the common sense stuff. Yeah. It's true. Joe, I come from a family that thinks that everything is a demon or a spirit. (laughs) I know exactly what you're talking about. Dealing with stress, it's a spirit of oppression. Dealing with lack of sleep, it's surely a demon. I don't want to live like this, but also don't want to ignore that it could be a possibility. Where is the line between demonic forces and just natural things that happen in life? I, in my first marriage, my in-laws were just like that. And they were, somebody said one time that a lot of times somebody's first revelation is that they don't ever get past that. And I remember one time he said, uh, you know, this guy came by my office three times this week and we cast the spirit of of pornography out of him three times. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what? They would, they would not give anything to, I said, what about your flesh though? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, everything is easy to blame a devil, but your flesh has got some involvement in this. Yep. And um, I mean, it got so crazy. When he, he, he said to me, hey, you got that movie, The Jungle Book. I go, yeah. He goes, <laughs> he said, my son was little. He goes, you need to get rid of that book because I just cast the devil, that spirit of that monkey out of some kid. And I go, King Louie, the king of the swingers? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, that's him. And I'm just like, uh, you know, so. Now, we're, not a, make, we're not making a lot of no. some of this stuff because I got the Ouija board stuff. And we've all been through that stuff like just watch out what you're hanging around and what you're feeding on. But well, there is there, there is demonic oppression. Yeah. And there are people that, you know, have devils. You know, there's no doubt about it. We And we don't, as a church world, typically, we don't talk about it No, we don't. Much. We don't talk about it at all. And deliverance is a real, is, yes, is, is a is. Real thing. Uh, but I, I don't like personally to give the devil any attention. And a lot of times when you become devil conscious, 
uh, or demon conscious, then you're just giving all that to attention. I think it's a much healthier to stay God focused and God conscious. And, um, and when you, you have to deal with a demonic uh, oppression or uh, someone that, you know, is struggling with something and, and it is an oppression, then, then you deal with it. We have the authority to deal with yes, it. Yes, we do. Thank you. Um, but, uh, but other than that, I just think it's a little extreme to just, you know, always. I'm Everything's the devil. Well, and I'm just going to, I just try, I just think it's just, don't give them that much attention. There was a very famous book written decades ago about uh, demons. Wonderful couple. I heard them speak personally one time. But they had a, I, there were so many demons. I thought, Lord, I, I've lost track. I, I need a dictionary to keep up with them. Which demon is this? And so you, you're not growing in God anymore. You're not growing in grace anymore. You just, uh, well, I don't know which demon this is. Well, there's too many. Doesn't matter. There's one devil. You know, just deal with it. You know, take your authority and deal with it. So. Yeah. Uh, Joe, my kids really dislike going to kids' church. They think it's immature and sometimes silly. I've let them sit with me in the adult services, but they just want to be on their phones or tablets. I'm afraid they aren't really understanding or getting anything. Do we just bite the bullet and make them go to kids' church? Well, mine went and I didn't give them an option. Daddy, can we stay with you? No. Because I'm going to the adult service. We're going to read our Bible and take notes. Can you do that? No, you're going to kids' church. So, but there was a time when they became teenagers. Uh, Dad used to be kind of silly and whatever. I said, well, what are they doing in there? And so they said as well, uh, if you come with me, you're going to open your Bible. You're going to take notes. You're not going to be on your phone. You're not going to be talking to your neighbor in the pew. And so I'd watch them. So uh, hopefully they grow up mature and like, hey, Sarah, listen to pastor. You know, you're old enough to hear what he's saying. And then you'd ask him when you'd pull him out of the parking lot, what'd you learn today? Give me one thing. Well, dad, he said this. Well, yes, he did. That's good. And so my kids never went to youth group. We had a great church, great youth group, but my kids never went. So the, they spent half the time playing games. I want to play games. I want to learn something. Well, Sarah, listen, Pat, we got a great pastor. It's not that it was wrong. It's just that it didn't fit. It wasn't that it was wrong. It just didn't fit. So that was me. So Angel, what's your side? Well, I worked in youth for many, many years, and so I'm a definitely pro youth uh, and children. Um, and I and I get it because we are so inundated with the spectacular now. It's hard to have a. I mean, I used to be with the power team, and we would go and we break they break bricks and bend steel bars and everything. And then the next week, here comes the youth pastor, and he's standing there with a the guitar. I mean, it was kind of a <laughs> an, anticlimactic. Oh, you know? After all of that, uh, so it, it is a challenge when their their TV and all this stuff's coming at them to go to a, a Sunday. But first of all, I would not let them complain about church. Nope. But then that means I therefore can't complain about church. Nope. <laughs> and then secondly, I would say uh, we are going to get involved in this church. Yeah. This is our this is our this church. is our home. And part of the. This is not the pastor's church. This is our church. Our church. And our job is to get involved. We're going to volunteer, usher, greet, teach Sunday school, mow the grass, clean the toilets. We're going to be very involved. We're going to be the first to show up and the last to leave the building. And if your kids get involved in children's, their attitudes will change. I yes, promise it will. you that. Yes, it will. Great. So that's what I would do. And, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I used to say to my kids, this is not a democracy. <laughs> This is a dictatorship. This is a theocracy. And yeah. I'm in charge here. Yeah. So uh, when you have your kids, you can have a democracy if you want. Yeah. One, but this isn't it right now. I love it. And so, yeah, just uh, I think your kids need to be involved in church. Yep. They yep. don't need to be sitting. It bothers me. My daughter, who has a master's in education, and uh, I said to her the other day, she said, this is the first generation of children that have been raised with a tablet or an iPad in their hands or a phone. And she said, the studies that are coming out now, the effects that that is having is fascinating and dangerous. And it bothers me that when we go to a restaurant or anything else, you look over and that's the big babysitter. 
Um, and, you know, with my kids, we traveled all the time. They had to learn to, how to behave on a plane, how to behave in a restaurant. How to carry on a conversation, how right. to listen and talk. And, yeah, and so I remember one time, it was Eastern, we were going to this restaurant for a buffet, and I knew there was going to be a big table of kids. And I said, uh, "If okay, let me tell you before we get there, if every kid gets up from your table and starts running around that restaurant, you better not until I tell you, you can get up, do not get up. So about 45 minutes into the conversation, I turned and looked at the table and every kid was up except <laughs> for my two. They're sitting there by themselves just talking to each other. And so that's your kids should learn. And people would ask her, what did you do? How did you do this? Like, Oh, I'd have flight attendants all the time say, I can tell your kids fly a lot. I mean, this just there's no choice. That's normal to us. That's what we do. That's our lives. Yeah. And so you have to learn how to behave in a restaurant. You have to learn how to behave on a plane. Yeah. And um, so it's it's possible. But it my is. suggestion is that they they need they need to get involved. Yes. And because if you can get a kid involved, and they can go through their high school years, the chances of them ever straying are slim. I know. Got them in. Drop the anchor. Yeah. Hey, we love you guys so much. We appreciate your time. Send in your questions. Yes. And don't forget to check us out at jimmcgee.com. We love you. Have love a great you day. Bye-bye. Bye. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.